Hi, it's Penny here. Welcome to another reading vlog. This week I'm going to be reading all three books of the Howl's Moving Castle trilogy. I actually think this trilogy might have another name. Oh, it just says Howl series at the front of the book. Uh, anyway, I have read Howl's Moving Castle, this one, uh, before and I really loved it. We're basically following this young girl named Sophie who is cursed by this witch uh, and kind of then goes off to seek her fortune uh, and runs into Hal, the wizard Hal, and his moving castle. I have read Hal's moving castle before and I really liked it but I wanted to reread it before I went into the sequels and finished off the series because I'm trying to finish off all the series that I can this year. So I don't really know what the sequels are about but I am excited to reread Hal's moving castle. I did actually start it last night I think I'm only a couple of chapters in, but already I'm loving it. The writing style is written a uh, really whimsical, kind of in a fairy tale style, but also uh, very self-aware. Um, it talks about how Sophie is the oldest of three sisters, and it's basically like that's very unfortunate because it means if she goes out and tries to seek her fortune, she's going to fail because she's the oldest, uh, and it's really the youngest one that everyone has great expectations of. Uh, but then their father dies, and the two youngest sisters kind of get sent off to different places by the mother who has ideas about what their future might bring um, but Sophie stays to work in the hat shop and even just Sophie making hats is written in a really magical way um, and then of course she gets cursed and she has now gone off and at the end of chapter two basically she's already got into Hull's moving castle. I believe there's going to be a lot that I've forgotten in the series but still I'm excited to read it. And actually what I'm going to do this week as well is normally I will have a physical book on the go and an audiobook, but this week I I have the audiobooks of all these books as well, so I will just read the series regardless of what format I'm reading in and we will make our way through and see how that goes. Hello, so just a quick update because we have decided to go down and look at some open homes again, which means we need to leave soon. Uh, also, excuse my empty bookshelves behind me, I'm halfway through filming like a bookshelf reorganization tour and I quite like how the top shelves looking but the rest is a bit sad. Uh, and the, the bookshelf over there I'm not even going to show you because it's such a disaster. Anyway, I wanted to update you on Howl's Moving Castle. I am now about halfway through it and I'm really enjoying it. I think recently I've done some rereads. Actually, these ones up here are a prime example, the Darker Shades of Magic series, uh, where I reread them and I didn't enjoy my reread as much. But this one, I think it's really rereadable because on a reread I'm seeing so many things that are being set up or being foreshadowed that I didn't even realize were happening the first time I read the book. And I also just really love like the undercurrent of like magical things but also there's an undercurrent of the things that are magical in this book maybe not being so magical, maybe, maybe being a little bit more related to our real world and I really like how that's done as well. I think this is a book that definitely people of all sorts of ages could read because the children will just enjoy like the whimsical story but there's also kind of a lot of underlying themes and just hints to things that I think you can appreciate as you get older. Um, as well, I am really liking the audiobook. That was my downfall again with the Darker Shades of Magic series. Uh, the audiobook, I'm finding it's very similar, I think, to the voice in my head, so it makes going back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book really easy. Um, as well, the copy that I've got has like these little uh, illustrations at the start of every chapter, and um, I'm finding they're quite good as well. Like, they're not amazing pieces of art necessarily but they do just add a little bit more to the story uh, and then when I'm listening to the audiobook actually I feel like I need to go and check those pictures just to see. I definitely do as well actually while I'm reading this have pictures of the movie in my head. The movie story is a little bit different like it's missing some things, they've changed a few things, but I think the feel of them is very similar and there's certain scenes like when Hal's having a tantrum in the bath, like certain scenes like that that are very similar and just like the movie plays in my head while I'm reading it. So I'm taking this camping and on our holiday trip as well as the rest of the books in the series we'll see whether I can get through them, but who really knows what's going to happen from this point for this week.
low. So it is a week and a half later. I'm classically bad at vlogging in public, outside, um, usually when we're holidaying. Right now I'm in a fairly quiet place except for the birds, so I feel pretty okay about it. So I thought I would update you on my reading, which I have a few updates. Even though mostly we've been looking at houses and holidaying, I have had a bit of reading time and I'll probably have some while we stay here. This is a weird kind of park. Um, it's kind of it was a rich person's estate and they gifted the land to the council but the council doesn't really know what to do with it mostly uh, there's like a big house i think they're still kind of like asking for proposals like years later if anyone has any ideas what to do with it but they do let you camp in like the car park picnic -y area and then actually the coolest thing about this park is the story walk so i'm currently at the end of the story walk basically there is a book it's been split up into different pages and there's signs along the pathway telling you the story. Uh, this book is called The Grist Does Not Exist and it's quite appropriate for the area because it's about these young kids going for a walk in the forest and their teacher keeps telling them the grist does not exist but you know he does and the kid at the back keeps saying I saw him I saw him and then when you get right to the end of the path uh, you get to the grist he's actually here um which is just so fun um i was so delighted the first time i found the story and then i saw the grist uh, and i can imagine as a kid it would be super great so i think that's the best part about this park um but it's a nice fairly quiet place to stay obviously the birds are noisy and it is kind of near a road so you might hear some noise of that but anyway let me tell you about my reading firstly I did finish off Hell's Moving Castle and I really loved it. I think especially reading this, I read a lot of it while we were at the beach, uh, at this place by the beach with really long grass and a lot of flowers. Not as many flowers as last time we stayed here, but still quite a lot of flowers. And um, part of the Moving Castle, they open like a flower shop and they have the Moving Castle going through these big fields of flowers and I could kind of imagine it where I was. Also, since we're sleeping in the back of our truck, I was kind of imagining that as a moving castle of its own. So I really love the way the moving castle works in this and I think in the movie that isn't really represented in the same way or quite as magical. There was actually an interview in the back of this book where she talks about the differences between the book and the movie and she's quite pragmatic about it. She's kind of like, you know, it wouldn't be possible probably to make it like the book but uh, she appreciates everything that was done. It was funny because she talked about like all these Japanese men coming over to talk to her about the story and like asking her where to go to see where it was set and then seeming kind of disappointed in what she told them and not going where she told them at all. Uh, also, she talks a lot about how she just finds her writing, her own writing, really funny. And I will say there is a lot of humor in this that I really enjoyed. And I also just think the story comes together so well. There's actually a fair amount going on in this book that isn't in the movie. And it's just a really great story. I had a lot of fun reading it. I think the writing style is something that so many different people could like. It's quite easy to read and it's quite short. And it was just a fun time. Uh, then, I have actually started Castle in the Air, but I've only read the first chapter. I'll try and see if I can finish it while we're here, because we're probably going to stay here a couple of days, maybe. Oh, my arm is getting tired. I'm not good at holding my vlogging camera up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Castle in the Air. So the first chapter is about this guy who is a carpet salesman, but really he's kind of a loser and he just likes to spend his whole time imagining this fake past for himself. Uh, so he likes to imagine that he was actually the son, the lost son of this king. So he's a lost prince and that he's betrothed to this beautiful princess. Uh, and he calls it like a castle in the air because it's not true. Or is it because then this guy comes and sells him this magic carpet and the magic carpet takes him somewhere which makes you question, like, is it true? I don't know, only, uh, maybe I read a couple of chapters but I'm not far through it, so I will continue that. But I'm, I'm liking it. I am interested to see how it really connects into Howl's Moving Castle. All I know so far is it is kind of set in the neighboring town and in Howl's Moving Castle in the interviews in the back she talked about how she kind of just wanted to see what would happen with this war that she kind of mentions in this that the king might have to go to with the neighboring kingdom and she also talks about how uh, she read a thousand and one Arabian Nights is that what it's called uh, she read that or someone read that to her and she realized there was lots of like fairy tale stuff that she didn't include in this one that she did want to include in a story but I think 
at least Hal is going to make like a cameo appearance, but we'll see. Uh, the other thing that I did read, because I didn't want to get too far ahead in the Moving Castle series without having updated you, uh, so I picked up I've, I've brought a lot of books on this holiday actually. Um, anyway, I picked up Under the Smoke Strewn Sky by Shawnee Maguire. So this is the fourth book in the, what is the series called? The Up and Under series. So this, I love the concept of this series. So basically in the book Middle Game, there is a children's book that this alchemist has written in order to get certain ideas into the mainstream consciousness and allow her to do certain alchemy. The concept's really cool. And then when I heard Shona Maguire was actually writing the books, I thought that's so cool. Uh, so it's written under the name A Deborah Baker, which is the character in Middle Game. It's so amazing and the concept is so amazing. Actually, the story has a lot of potential, but the way that it's written is not my favorite. I just feel like this could have been one book. Basically, each book is focused on a different realm of the up and under, which is this world these two children end up finding themselves in, and they have to travel the improbable road to get to the impossible city. Uh, and each book kind of takes them through a different kingdom, and each of the kingdoms are based on elements. So the concept is cool, but I think it could have been one book with a few chapters in each realm rather than a short book in each realm, because it's so lacking in plot. And I often like when Shawnee Maguire kind of puts in lots of digressions and social commentary and just ideas about life. Uh, but in these ones, I just feel like it doesn't connect into the story enough. And so it just feels like, what is she even talking about? You know, it's like not relevant to anything. And even when it's things like it's ideas mostly that I agree with for the most part. Uh, but I still just feel really impatient with it. So I rated the first three books actually pretty low. I think actually the first one I liked. The second one was the worst, the worst. Uh, the third one had some redeeming qualities. The fourth one, like it does kind of come together. I've read some reviews saying people were disappointed in the ending and I can definitely see why you would be. It does make the whole thing to some degree feel kind of pointless. There's a little bit of a twist in there which was fun. But it just also doesn't feel like it delivers on the concept enough, like it doesn't link in to middle game enough. And I think as well, like if I compare these two books, Howl's Moving Castle is so whimsical and you, I kind of feel like Under the Smoke Strewn Sky is trying to do the same thing. And there are moments where the writing is really beautiful and it describes things in such a great way, but most of it just feels so pointless. Um, whereas Hell's Moving Castle, like it makes some really good points, it has some great lessons in it, but it doesn't do it in the same way that Under the Smoke's True and Sky does, where it feels like it's bashing you over the head with these ideas, and it's just so literal about them, whereas Hell's Moving Castle, I feel like is a little bit more respectful of the reader, and understands that even young readers can understand lessons without being bashed over the head with it, and like realizes that in a story, the way you teach lessons is by telling the story in a way that makes that lesson clear, not just like writing the lesson down in amongst the story. And also like the lessons that are written down in this in Under the Smoke Strength Sky don't relate to the story very well. Oh, and as well, like the characters in Under the Smoke Strength Sky actually don't feel very well developed, whereas in Hell's Moving Castle, even the side characters, I felt like I could, I got a good feeling of what they were like. So obviously I definitely preferred Hell's Moving Castle to Under the Smoke Strength Sky, but I am glad to have finished the series now. It's finished. I don't have to worry about it anymore and feel like I haven't finished it. I wish, honestly, I wish I was less of a completionist and I didn't always feel like I needed to finish things. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to our campsite and probably read some of this. Also probably look at a million pictures of houses because we're still deciding. We did find one that maybe we want, but maybe it needs a bit too much work. So we need to decide. Hello? Oh, can you see him? I don't know if I can put my camera in the right place, but I'm being visited. He's so cute. Hello, little one. Nope. He doesn't want to talk to me. Anyway, I'm going to go read and just relax and probably talk about houses. So I will try and catch you up again before we get back to Auckland. But who knows? Because I, we don't even know when we're going back still. Um, because we might wait until this weekend to see if there's any more open homes. But we also might be getting sick of just camping and staying in random places. So... Pick it up 
So we are back home. My shelves are still empty or mostly empty. There's a few more up there. Um, my task for tomorrow will be sorting this out and then maybe I'll have a better background. Uh, but my task for today was just like sorting shit out, washing my hair. Honestly, after camping for two weeks, having a shower was really nice. I do like camping, but I also really like showers. Anyway, let me catch you up on my reading. To be honest, I've only read the first half of Castle in the Air and no further. I just we were busy doing other stuff. We still didn't find a house, but you know, we we're busy holidaying. So I've read about half of this and I'm a little bit conflicted about it. Like I am having fun with it. Uh, most of the first half has a real Aladdin feel and is very similar to the story of Aladdin because Abdullah Abdullah, is that his name? Yeah, Abdullah ends up basically going on this flying carpet adventure. Uh, he has to try and save this princess. He finds a genie. He makes some wishes. There's a band of thieves. There's a lot of the same pieces from the Aladdin story. But then he runs into this soldier, and I am pretty sure that the soldier is a character from the previous book, but it's not clear that that's true. And so, in a lot of ways, even though he's now gone to the same uh, general area as Howl's Moving Castle, it's still not that clear of a connection. And I just feel like with Howl's Moving Castle, like I'm so in love with Sophie's story and just her experiences with Kalsifer and Hal and even Michael, the apprentice wizard. Um, like, I just, I love all her sisters. I love all the characters in that and the story is so well told. It just feels very unique, even though it's using a lot of typical fairy tale elements. Whereas this doesn't feel as unique. There are some bits that are really funny and I do like Abdullah. I actually think last time I talked about it, I called him a loser. I mean, definitely his family sees him as a loser, but like, he's still a nice guy. He just has a lot of daydreams and not a lot of concrete life which is fine he's still like a successful entrepreneur you could say or a successful uh carpet salesman anyway he's quite brave going off on this adventure to try and save the princess we did about halfway also have an introduction of like this magical cat which i quite like but also have no idea where that's really going i just think like halfway through i really have no idea where the rest of the story is going I mean, I guess we'll save the princess at some point, but at the moment it doesn't really seem clear how we're getting to that, even though he is trying. I, I, I guess the thing is, I'm really enjoying this story, but I just don't really see a clear connection to Howl's Moving Castle. And I'm not loving it as much as Howl's Moving Castle because it just doesn't feel as unique. But it's still funny. It's still whimsical. I still think it has a lot of good messages. But I think I'm just waiting for that connection to become clear. Blue. So I once again have bookshelves behind me, so that's nice. Uh, also, I have finished, let's take this bookmark off, I have finished Castle in the Air. I really liked it, but also it wasn't quite everything I could have hoped for. We did get near the end kind of a lot of the characters from the first book coming into the story and there were much more connections and I did like that. I liked seeing Sophie and Hal and Sophie's sisters and some of the other characters. I like seeing those again. Now, there's also a kind of a similar thing to what happens in Hal's Moving Castle where in Hal's Moving Castle you kind of discover that a lot of people are not who you thought they were uh, and the same thing in Castle in the Air and I liked how they all came together. I liked how you could see all the clues. It felt quite satisfying at the end even though I actually had guessed something wrong so that was a surprise and I didn't mind that surprise. I think it's a lot of fun. The only thing I will say like so what frustrated me is there's actually a fair amount of like fat phobia in here or people being you know referred to as fat 
as an insult and maybe it's trying not to be too bad about it but I don't know maybe it's also a product of its time but I didn't really like those bits uh, also in here we have Abdullah's relationship with Flower in the Night the princess and it's so frustrating because he just like sees her decides she's beautiful and that he's in love with her and so really for most of the book she just feels like an object of lust rather than like a real person and they never really get to know each other properly whereas the whole uh, relationship that this book has is about like a slow burn relationship about characters really getting to know each other and then working together and the relationship coming from that which is the kind of relationship I much prefer to this kind of just we saw each other we liked each other kind of pointless thing so that was frustrating and I think just because the whole storyline of this was based around him going to save this princess so it was all based around that lust or that crush whatever that was supposed to be it just for me meant I wasn't really engaged in the story anyway now that I've read that I can pick up uh, the house of many ways this is much thicker than the other two so we will see I don't really know what it's about there's a single door that leads to any number of places even the past and it does mention Sophie and how and Calcifer uh, one thing I will say actually what I really love in these first two books and hopefully we'll get more in the third book is there's one character who does their magic by just like telling things like talking to objects and telling those objects what they're going to be or what they're going to do and I just I really love the way that's done so hopefully we'll get more of that in this hello so I think I'm going to want to use this as my background all the time now that I'm excited about my new bookshelf layout although I wish there was another bookshelf here that'll be the plan once we've actually moved but anyway I did want to update you on my reading so I am now I think not quite halfway maybe past the third anyway some way into A House of Many Ways and now I know what it's about so that's progress and I am actually really liking this one so we're following this girl named Charmaine I will say the way it's spelt it has all the same letters as the word chairman and my brain just keeps reading it as chairman which is not helpful but basically uh, this girl Charmaine she really just wants to read all the time her parents have never really made her do anything so she has no skills no even basic functioning abilities like she can't cook or clean or do anything uh, then her auntie has basically meddled and arranged for her to go and stay with her great uncle who is a wizard although he's going off being taken away by elves to be cured of some sickness he's got so she's come into this house with no idea how anything works it's a massive mess because he's been sick and everything is run by magic so not only does she not know basic skills anyway but she doesn't know magic uh, but it is set up um, basically her uncle set it up so whenever she asks the question he'll answer her and so she's kind of learning a little bit of magic along the way uh, there are also some other uh, creatures and people that kind of come into the story that I'm really liking I will say so Charmaine in a lot of ways is quite unlikable which is actually similar to Howl's Moving Castle like in both of these I feel like we're following these young women as they go out and start getting out into the world and finding their place and they're also kind of I guess meeting up with someone that then they have to get to know. Sophie in Hal's Moving Castle is moving into the castle and doing housework for Hal and in this one Charmaine's doing housework for her uncle uh, but also this house is magical similar to Hal's Moving Castle in that there's like a door so at first it seems like it's just a two-room house a kitchen and a lounge but uh, depending on how you go through the door you can get into other parts of the house and I, I really like how that works uh, there's also a dog who's maybe magical I'm not really sure at this point uh, but I really like the dog and I just think there's a lot to like in this and I just feel like I already feel much more connected to the characters in this than I do in this and I think it still just comes down to the fact that this story is all based on that like fake love uh, that Abdul is feeling for this woman that he barely knows whereas this feels like Charmaine is trying to achieve her dreams trying to go out into the world and find her place and I guess I just feel that it's more relatable but also like more honorable genuine I'm not sure but I'm loving this I'm having a lot of fun with it and it's still just written in that same whimsical style with a lot of humor and I felt like I was gonna update you on something else now uh, but I forgot this week I'm only reading one series or one book at a time which is unusual for me uh, also it hasn't just been a week but hopefully I'll finish this off soon and then I can pretend like I've caught up on my reading plans even though I definitely have not
Hello, so I have finished House of Many Ways and I really liked this one. Did I like it as much as House Moving Castle? Probably not, but I did like it more than Castle in the Air. Although, like, this was still a lot of fun. Uh, just that House of Many Ways and House Moving Castle are a lot more similar in feel and just the characters and the way that things all come together in the end. This one does come together in the end as well, but I just feel like uh, Diana Wynne Jones is really good at like introducing all these different elements and then they all kind of come together you know kind of like a sandal lunch I've just been watching um, some Sanderson review videos but a little bit like that where just like all these little things that you've been getting throughout the story suddenly come together in a really interesting way actually also in a kind of chaotic way like I would say all of these books actually are fairly chaotic in parts and especially at the end this one very chaotic at the end but also very satisfying just seeing it all come together. I think as well like the journey of this that you go through with Charmaine where in the beginning she really just has no idea how to do anything and she wants to get out and become an adult, find her place in the world but she doesn't know how and then you know she does see this as an opportunity and then seeing how she achieves that and like the place that she ends up in is a really satisfying journey to go on. As well I think my favorite thing about this is uh, when Charmaine is reading I often I don't really like books where the characters are readers because it just feels like it's trying a bit too hard to be like hey we're all readers here but in this one uh, there's parts where something stressful will happen and Charmaine will say okay now that that's done I just want to go and read my book and then there's this other character Peter who's always like no we've got to do some housework or we've got to go and do this other thing and she's like Peter I just want to read my book you know and it's very relatable I, I really love those parts. One thing I will say is like I quite liked Hal in Hal's Moving Castle but I found him a little bit annoying in House of Many Ways so in House of Many Ways we get Hal and Sophie and also some uh, of the side characters from Castle in the Air so I almost want to suggest that because House of Many Ways and Hal's Moving Castle are so similar that you might want to just skip Castle in the Air and you probably could but there are a few characters that you would come across that you might be a little bit unclear on or like just missing some of the connections but I, I also don't think it would be too bad but I definitely still think that uh, children would love all of these they're so whimsical and fun there's some really funny moments especially amongst all the chaos and also the way that the magic works in all of these is amazing I just I really loved it it's so I don't know the magic feels really magical at the same time it's kind of feeling like possible and as well the pacing in all of these is great like I just flew through these I was worried uh, with my holiday having kind of ruined my reading plans that it would take me ages to catch up but actually I've been able to read these in a short period of time and now I'm like massively behind on my reading plans but not as much as I could have been if these had been harder to get through. Oh actually one other thing I wanted to say is that I said I was going to read the audiobooks of these along with reading them physically and because of my holiday I didn't really get to that. Um, I could have possibly done it for how so many ways except my audiobook of it returned itself to the library so um, I ended up only really listening to some of Howl's Moving Castle via audiobook and I did like that one but I honestly couldn't tell you about the other two. But anyway uh, if you have read this series I would love to talk to you about it down in the comments and also if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos please subscribe. Otherwise thank you so much for watching I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.